we're going to talk about now are some of the more commonly used functions within Metastock. Now the problem we have today is you'll see there's actually over 200 pre-programmed functions in Metastock. Ridiculous number. Quite a lot, which obviously provides you a great deal of flexibility. Now our intent this morning is not to cover all 200. What we have done today is grabbed the more common functions that people use. That was our intent this morning. So the ones I'm about to introduce to you now, you'll probably use often and certainly others would use them as well to be of most use to you. You'll see that um, the functions are generally based on either indicators or candlesticks. For example, the relative strength index is an indicator that some people use and whilst you can go to a text and identify the formula for calculating the RSI, we could program that into Metastock or Metastock's done all the work for us and they pre-packaged that formula, pre-packaged that calculation into a function called the RSI. So if you wanted to use the RSI in your formulas, you would actually use one of the functions, the RSI function. Also the candlesticks, there's over 70 or so candlesticks functions within Metastock, over 70 or so. So there's quite a few in there. So if you wanted a particular candlestick pattern, there's a good chance Metastock has it. You don't have to program it, it's already there as a function. You just have to go and find it. Okay, let's talk about uh, the common ones now. These are the ones that I'm going to go through now in the next 10 minutes or so. First one is the reference function, just as you've asked. Let's go through that now. What the reference function allows you to do, and I reckon it's of the ones we're about to go through, one of the more useful functions, what the reference function allows you to do is to refer to a piece of data in the past. That piece of data can be anything. It can be anything. It can be the closing price from yesterday or five days ago or 10 days ago. It can also be the value of an indicator, the MACD, from 68 days ago, 74 days ago. It can even be the value of an indicator you build yourself. This can provide you a great deal of flexibility. It allows you to refer to any piece of data that Metastock can calculate in the past. You'll notice there the syntax is quite simple. The abbreviation is REF, R-E-F, open brackets, we then place in the data array, comma, then the number of periods we are going to go back close brackets. If you go down to the bottom of the page there, you'll notice some very simple examples. Ref, open brackets, C comma minus one, close brackets, refers to the previous period's closing price. Notice I didn't say yesterday, previous period. Now, if we are using that in a daily chart or a daily exploration, that previous period will be yesterday. But if we are using a weekly chart or a weekly exploration, that minus one will be the close from the last week, not the day just gone. Is that clear? Remember Dave spoke about periodicity? It's really important. So all of these items here, that's not days, that's periods. Notice uh, another example there, we've got V is greater than the previous periods volume. Yes, ref V comma minus one. And the previous periods volume is greater than the volume before that. Some very, very simple examples. Reference is a very useful feature. Very, very useful. And I'm sure you'll find uh, some uses for it and uh, certainly benefit you. Can I ask you a quick question, Stuart? Is it possible to use a positive number instead of a negative number? Good question. You know, people often ask, if we can go ref C comma minus one, why can't we put plus one in there? And, you know, and we laugh about it and we think, oh, that'd be wonderful. Now, clearly, you can answer that question yourself, whether Metastock can determine what the C plus one is. In actual fact, despite the fact we laugh at it, Metastock will accept C comma plus one close brackets. It will accept it. It is part of the formula language. But the key to, to this is whilst it won't tell you what's going to happen in the, the next period, whilst it won't do that for you, it can actually be quite useful in certain applications. What it will do for you is if you refer to the C plus one, it will look when, uh, it'll look a day ahead or a period ahead once it has the data for that particular period. And if we've identified something that has occurred in this particular period, that will be true not today, it'll be true back here one period ago. Does that make sense? Because back one period ago, yes, that is true now that we have the data to calculate that. It won't be true right now, it'll be true one period ago. You can use positive numbers. For example, a simple example would be to identify a peak. Now, to me, a peak is the highest point between a short-term uptrend and a short-term downtrend. So you could identify a peak as being having a single day here 
The two days before it, the high was the high of the day was less than today, and the one before that lower again. The two days in front of the highest point, the highs were again lower and then lower again. You could do up a very simple indicator to identify a peak where we had today, we then had uh, minus one and minus two being lower, and then the plus one, plus two being higher, uh, lower and lower. When all those data have been filled in and we do that calculation, that peak will be true on that particular highest point. Okay, so there is an application of plus numbers, positive numbers.